Crash, recession, stock market collapse. There's money to be made by making you fearful. And you don't want to be fearful. You don't want to be the most pessimistic, but also not the most optimistic. And currently the macro doesn't look that bad. The interest rates are still going up. They're not yet declining, but the inflation rate is. And once the interest rates are above the inflation rate, it's normally when hiking completely stops. Now, when we look at a faster measure of inflation here at trueflation.com, we can look at the same kind of inflation, the same kind of basket, but it's here measured quicker. So it looks at mark to market pricing of gas, of housing. There's no delay in housing surveys, etc. And here we get all the same kind of constituents of the CPI, but it's updated way more often. And that's currently at 3.88%, so way below the current interest rate. That's bullish. So there won't be more monetary tightening, which would in turn help risk on assets, technology stocks, cryptocurrency, even just regular stocks. Now, how bad has this crisis for asset prices been so far? Not too bad. So this is 2009, the global financial crisis. And when we take that crash and when we overlay this to the current situation, this has only been not even half as bad. So this is the S&P 500 went down 25% in its maximum and the global financial crisis saw a 55% drop. Now, not everything is rosy, especially in the banking sector. We do see those bailouts and I expect them to continue because the health of the banking sector is actually pretty, pretty bad. And that's a long-term thing. That's not just since the interest rates have been increased. Look at this. So we've got the US bank index, BKX, and it's got a few publicly listed shares in there. And when we look at its development, it doesn't look too bad, right? This is again, the global financial crisis, not too bad of a fallout. And we are pretty close. We've even seen an all time high in terms of US dollars in October of 2021. So where is really the true crisis happening here? It's in relative performance because capital markets inflate, right? The fiat valuation of all kinds of stocks trends up over time because of inflation, because of capital concentration. So what you really want to be looking at is the bank performance relative in the overall stock market. So let's look at BKX divided by the S&P 500. That's the same chart, but in relative performance. So this here is the global financial crisis. So since then, banks went down in relative valuation by 44%. So what's going to happen here? The Fed will unlikely have a reason to keep interest rates elevated for a long time. So they will reduce the interest rates. That will unfortunately though unlikely help the banks too much. There will still be contagion. Overall, the banks are in a bad position and they're likely going to continue to underperform even without interest rate hikes. This is a very long-term trend. The chart here starts in 1992. So this bank index has underperformed versus the general stock market by 60%. 67%. That being said, loser monetary policy will of course help the tech stocks. It will help risk on. And tech stocks are also the kind of stocks that tend to outperform. Though it's pretty much the opposite of what we see with the banking sector. The tech stocks, this is now the NASDAQ divided by the S&P 500. It outperforms very nicely. We of course had our dot-com bubble and over here the NASDAQ underperformed the S&P 500 by 67%. But over the long term, right, this chart starts in 19 85 of the long term technology outperforms and this recent blip due to the monetary tightening had tech stocks underperform 20%. But we might already be coming back up again. So I don't really see a fundamental reason why this general trend should be changing. Banks are likely going to continue to underperform. They might get completely put into public hands. There might be takeovers and the government might be running the show more and more. But at the same time, when tightening comes down, when interest rates come down, technology stocks with their inherent leverage are likely going to continue on their merry way. That's at least how I personally position myself. Anything with a lot of leverage that will 
will benefit from loser money, be that crypto or highly volatile stocks such as Tesla, they're likely going to be the winners going forward. So don't be the most pessimistic. There is a time to be pessimistic when the Federal Reserve has to raise interest rates, but that game is probably over and the market hasn't yet adjusted accordingly. Now, one asset that tends to outperform everything else during a bull run is of course crypto, it's Bitcoin. And I made a dedicated video just on timing the market for Bitcoin. That video comes next, it's over here. So looking forward to seeing that video and thanks for watching this one. Bye-bye.